Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for All About Android is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by Netflix. Watch thousands of TV episodes and movies on your PC, Mac, iPad, iPhone, or TV instantly. All stream directly to you, saving you time, money, and hassle. For your free 30-day trial, go to netflix.com slash twit. And by Trim Tonic, a natural appetite suppressant tonic that takes the edge off of being hungry. Visit www.trimtonic.com with a Q for more information and enter coupon code TWIT for a 20% discount. All right, well, today is Monday, June 20th, 2011. Welcome to episode 13, lucky number 13, of All About Android, your weekly source for the latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I'm Eileen Rivera. I'm Jason Howell. And I'm Ron Richards, and I'm back. Yay, Yay Ron, Yay. welcome back. Yes, I it's made it. I, I survived New York. I Thanks. know. Well, you sa- sounded like you had a good time based on your tweets. Yeah, actually, it was It was one of those uh, whirlwind work, f- uh, fun, family, everything combined all in the one week, which is insane. Nice. But it was a very good week. But I was sad to miss the show I, last Monday. I kind of was like, where am I supposed to, I'm supposed to be somewhere? There was, yeah. there was a piece something. of you missing yeah. from the show, and I have to imagine in reality there was a piece of the show missing from you. Oh, right? thank you. But it's good to be back. <laughs> yeah. Yay, Ron's right back. On. And also joining us today is Jason Applebaum. From Hack Five. That's Absolutely. right. Hello. You know, we we pulled you in here. Yeah. Last uh, minute. Very last minute. So well, I was technically uh, sitting in here. You pulled yourself in here. I think. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We, we kept you in here. Yes. We kept That's you in here. Did. Lock the door. And uh, you know, you develop for Android. So I do. Um, there's a couple stories that we're going to start off with that I thought, dude. Let's get a developer's opinion on them, and uh, that's why you're here. And plus, you just love the you know the Android. So Absolutely. why not? We've been wanting Android. you to be on the show for a while, so it was perfect timing, I think. It is. I'm here. All right. Well, this week we're going to be discussing the pains of developing for Android. The um, we're not going to be talking about that tablet anymore. We're going to talk <laughs> a di- about a different tablet that we'll talk about in the hardware. And in the arena, we've got launcher apps. That's right. It's going to win very, this arena. Uh, Hey, you know, I wanted to give a quick shout out. Um, this um, past weekend, I went to something called Nerdtacular with my buddy uh, Scott Johnson. It's his big, uh, you know, convention out in Utah, and uh, I went there. And last week, I told you all that I would do another show for uh, the iOS platform, reviewing apps, and um, that was kind of what I was representing. But in the audience, lo and behold, everyone knew about all about Android. So I really? was really excited. You know, people were like, "Well, what else do you do? You do this vampire show. You do, you know, App Slappy, the iOS show." And people were shouting out Android, and I was wow. like, "Yes!" Cool. And there were a lot of people there who know our show, showing me their, um, you know, their. Uh, uh, droid charge and you know we were I was all talking yeah all the devices I thought it was really cool so um, that was awesome. just a shout out to all of you that I met you guys were super cool and I wanted to make sure Jason and, and Ron knew that too because that, um, we love we, we feel the support I really funny you should say it. that that actually the same thing happened to me at the airport in San Francisco no as I was leaving way. as I was leaving last week I was flying Are you out of Richards <laughs> well, I was, no it, w- it wasn't so much as that but I was flying okay. out of I was flying out of Virgin's new terminal and it's fantastic by the way if you haven't been to T2 yet yeah. SFO, it's really nice. But um, there's a place that sells cupcakes, and so I went to go buy a cupcake, and the dude's like, "You look really familiar," <laughs> and I was just like, "Oh," I was like, I, I just kind of shrugged, and I looked like crap. I had a hat on, and I was like, "I was like, I do podcasts." And he's like, "Oh yeah, the Android one." So, <laughs> yes! so if you're listening, you're wow. watching, dude. Thanks for the cupcake. It was awesome. It's uh, awesome. Thank you so much. I just get surprised. I go, "Oh yeah. my god, you know me from that show!" Yeah. Yay! Yeah, I'm that's so great. excited. That Never get over it. It's always fun. No, I know. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, now that we're over ourselves, um, <laughs> let's talk some news. And we're going to do a little bit different, right? Yeah, we're going to do a little bit different. This week, we're uh, not actually going to discuss any like big news items that are that are in the news. There really wasn't anything no. that, that totally caught my eye immediately. There, it, the, the weird thing about Android is there's so much happening. Yeah, there's the always time. these little pieces, and we, we can only ever choose one or two for the show, so we feel like they have to be like really, really huge news stories. Well, this week, we decided to opt for something that's maybe – inspires a little bit more discussion than mm-hmm. it is news because we there were a few uh, art, uh, blog entries written by some developers on Android and it just 
kind of seemed like a good time to discuss some of these points because we have a lot of developers that listen to the show. And uh, what do you know? We happen to have an Android developer. Yes. I'm a developer right here. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, we got to um, cover some of this stuff. This morning, uh, I ran into this uh, blog post from the developers of Battleheart, boom, the boom, app boom. that I reviewed several weeks ago. I still don't know why it lost, but whatever. Anyways, I think you're unnaturally obsessed with this app, by the way, with this oh, game. Oh, I love this game. <laughs> it's an epic game. game. And you know the, the, the yeah. irony of all of this, you know, the first time I played it was um, on the G Slate, and then I had to reformat this, so I had to start over, and now my Samsung Galaxy Tab is on the fritz, and now i got to start over again, probably once I do the factory <laughs> reset. It's okay, I love it. I love, it doesn't take me that long to get back to where I was, but um, alright, so the developers of Battleheart uh, wrote a post this morning basically about developing for Android versus iOS. Now this app is on both um, platforms and it pretty much looks the same a la like Pulse and there's other apps that you know are um, when you when you cross platforms they pretty much do the same thing have great UI great you know use that kind of thing now he kind of breaks down you know the good and the bad you know the good is that there was no approval process resulting in updating or bugs issues and compatibilities the revenue for paid apps is pretty strong uh, says within 80 percent of the iOS counterpart uh, Android users have a hunger of high quality apps and are willing to pay for them I think that's the big uh, point that he wanted to make is that you know there's a lot of slack that Android users get for not paying for apps but probably because there weren't enough robust or quality apps to actually pay for and I think that's starting to change. Um, the bad part um, is he's talking about in the dev point of view, the point of contract um, so has to contend with unending support emails ranging from download and installation. He doesn't want to deal with that in the iOS store. I guess the Apple takes care of all of that. Um, to uh, well, that's what he says. To a wide variety of devices and ROMs that he has to, to work on. It, he kind of details a lot of um, you know the good and the bad. Um, for developing for one platform versus the other. I thought this is a really good discussion point because we've been talking so much about, you know, um, why apps aren't coming to, you know, Android, when are they coming, that kind of thing. So, I don't know, maybe this is a good time for uh, Jason to launch into to his, uh, his feelings as a uh, developer. But would you agree with most of what he's saying? Absolutely. Okay. The reason his his platform or his game not his platform his uh, his game looks so good on Android as well as iOS is he's using Unity. Unity okay. is is a uh, is a gaming platform is a gaming toolkit essentially that allows you to develop um, one set of code and then essentially just recompile that for Android. So, so are you saying it's easier for gaming uh, developers to port their app in? If they use Unity. Okay. If they don't use Unity, it takes a small act of God. Okay. Um, because the code, you, you have to recreate the whole game, uh -huh. and creating a game is a lot of work. And the iOS supports games way better than Android does. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't say that because I'm going to get a lot of hate mail because Android has come... A leaps and bounds. Yeah, absolutely. But back when, I mean, because you have to think about it, development cycles. A new, a new feature gets released by Google. It's at least six months for a development community to ingest that and for somebody to get to that on their feature set and implement it. Huh. Because we already have stuff we're already doing that they announced, you know, three months ago that we've got to implement. I mean, it's, it's just a constant development cycle unless they have a huge development team and a huge budget, which I know when I develop apps, I don't. I mean... It's just you mm -hmm. don't have those budgets to go back and, and reuse all the new features, and that's what kind of causes the hard problem. But Unity makes that really simple if you chose to use Unity. Okay. Um, so that's I, his, his uh, so that's a good thing. It's a great you know, thing. You know? Unity is an excellent platform. Okay. Um, but it is a choice, and it is money. It doesn't. It's not free. Um, it is a. It's a paid-for platform, but it's an excellent choice for games. Uh, but you have to. Cho you have to make a conscious choice to go that way or not to go that way. Mm -hmm. There's a hundred pros and cons. But the interesting thing, of what he's talking about, and I completely agree with, is the paid apps. Mm. There aren't that many good paid apps in Android. Right. And and unfortunately, I think of the, you know a while ago there was numbers that were released. I believe mm -hmm. that was like only twenty percent or pay. It was it was a really low number compared to iOS. Does oh, anyone... I think I remember that. I don't remember mm -hmm. off the top of my head that that uh, that news story. But yeah, it was a small number. Yeah, yeah, it was it was a very small number, and I really felt like that was a reflection of the apps mm -hmm. because I think the development communities are just catching up, and there's huge incentives in the Android marketplace more so than in the iTunes market or I. Yeah, iTunes Marketplace, I guess, mm -hmm. the, the iTunes App Store. Um, and, you know, you are on your own. You are supporting mm -hmm. your own app, but you are in the uh, iTunes Store, except for you're not going to have the download and install problem because it's one piece of hardware. Right. Um, yeah. 
Okay, when and you kind of um, rolled your eyes when I was talking about the the marketplace, and yes. he's he's complaining about having to have to deal with all the, in, you know, somewhat inane becoming questions. a customer service agent. Yeah, pretty much. and he's like, I don't want to deal with that. I'm, yeah. you know, welcome to developing real software. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dang. Sorry. What do you, no, what do you mean? What do you true, mean when you say that? It's true, though. No, yeah, Rod's got yeah. my back on this one. It's totally true. I mean, if, you, if, you, if you're going to create products, whether it's web or apps or anything like that, customer service is as big of an aspect as your functionality and your UI. If people, if people can't get the support they need from, your, from whatever your application is, they're going to they're gonna badmouth you in the comments and that sort of thing. You need to, if you're going to put something out there, you need to be able to be ready to respond to that. Ag agreed. I completely agree with that. I think one of the points uh, that... That uh, he was, is it Mika? Is Mika his name? Uh, I'm not name? sure. No, it's. Um... Sorry, I don't have the article right. I think in front Mika of me, Mobile. The, the, uh, one Mika. of the points that, that he makes on the on the Mika Mobile entry is that you know these support issues are flooding in, but they aren't necessarily support issues directly related to the code that he's built. Sure. So it might be you know download issues through the Android market. It's basically you know all of these issues directly but, related but, to the Android well, market. The thing, but the thing is that he's complaining, on. and he, I'm sorry, now we're arguing and talking over each other. But he's complaining. <laughs> he says he's you know with the dev being the point of contact, they have to deal with issues and things like that. There are applications that will handle it. I for for my stuff for for iFam. Boy, we use a, a web application called Mailroom that allows us to manage all of our incoming um, con you know, customer service re requests, and you can have stock templated emails. So it literally takes two seconds to write an email saying, the issue you're having is due to, you know, due to a download installation issue with Google, please follow up with Google. You can email them here or whatever. You write that email once, and you can just send that as many times as you need. Mm -hmm. Like the thing is, is that it's funny because it's the typical kind of develop. When, I don't know if this is totally on topic, but you know the developer doesn't want to deal with the user a lot of times. And like, <laughs> well, that's, is that true, Jason? <laughs> no comment. Right. <laughs> so as a product guy, I mean, I've worked as a product guy, and and I've tried to get developers to respond to customer service issues and things like that, and it's hard. And you've got to be prepared to that if you're going to be successful. It's a part of being successful. Yeah, um, absolutely. I think Mailroom's a great example of handling customer service. And I think his point in the article, kind of going back to it, of iTunes handles it. Like I said, it's it's now what three devices? iPad, I uh, square thing that doesn't have a phone. The uh, touch. I type iPod touch. <laughs> uh, and, yeah, and, the the iPhone. IPhone. and the iPhone. You have four plat. You have three. Yeah. Excuse me, three platforms. If it doesn't download, it's something wrong with your iTunes. They don't automatically blame the developer. But for the developers to kind of defend good development here, if you develop an app and you take an account of all the weird quirks yes it requires you taking account of all the weird quirks of all the phones ever in existence you know you can circumvent a lot of this mm. uh, because you know, yes there are download problems when you install the SD card with uh, certain brands of phones yeah. mm -hmm. um, there are ways to handle it too yeah, and I mean, uh, one, another point from this entry was just the fact that there are a lot of people obviously running a lot of different pieces of hardware, mm -hmm. but also running a lot of custom layers and stuff that might yep. also be introducing. So it's like this never ending, uh, you know, sea of issues that have that aren't directly related to whether the developer did a good or a bad job coding and, their software. There's just a lot of unanswered questions. Yeah, and that's the challenge with the platform. I mean, because of there's so many, you know, there's so many different devices and so many different, you know, people who are rooting and installing their own ROMs and things like that. That's part of the that's part of the obstacles, the challenges of doing what you're doing. Okay, well this but is. Oh, I was just, just going to say, but if you really want to, if you really want to start a business and make money, it's clear that Android is the leader and it's going to give you more returns because well, right. they need returns. He's talking about the rating system. You know, sure. um, Android uh, people are v are much more apt to review and really think about it. And I, you know, I used to see that when we did app judgment together, Ron, is that you know in the forums it would be mostly you know Android users um, yep. giving us feedback, not the iOS people. You know, they're passive. Yeah. It seems like, at, at least mm -hmm. in my own experience, um, and and to his point, uh, Michael Mobile's point is that you know um, uh, the revenue is there. You can make money, you know, in the Android uh, platform. It just again, it takes. You can run an entire company off the Android App Store. I've heard too. Sure. I've heard the exact same Absolutely. thing. The feedback I've gotten from developers is that they've done iOS apps and they've gone over to Android, and the amount of money is an order of magnitude difference. Mm. Mm. Especially so. if you're doing good apps. If yeah. you're doing bad apps and you're doing bad ports, because if I see one more iOS port, I, it's just, it's one <laughs> of those things. You don't like the iOS ports. No. But sometimes <laughs> they're, they're high demand. Uh, what was the, uh, the app that you were talking about last week? Oh, uh, Instagram. Instagram. I mean, There's priming. so many, yeah, I've 
we'll get into that. I've got a new sort of. Well, that's a good segue. Happened. That's no, a good segue to our next discussion. Yeah, it's totally a good segue. The, the next discussion piece was something that I had a lot of people hit me up on Twitter, and we had a few emails to uh, AAA at twit.tv if you want to send in an email. And it's over at uh, marco.org. And essentially, this is Marco Armand. He's the uh, creator of Instapaper. He's also an amateur tech writer, as he says in his blog. And the, uh, the <laughs> entry uh, post says, the Android tablet problem nicely summarized by one review's conclusion. Essentially, Marco uh, is taking to task an Ars Technica review of the Galaxy Tab 10.1. As well, that, that review also features uh, Honeycomb 3.1 kind of uh, basic review in there as well. And uh, so Marco kind of goes point by point for a, through a certain section of the review to kind of take to task what the reviewer is saying about just uh, you know Android on tablet in general and how that compares to the iPad too. Um, so just a few things that I pulled out. Uh, it says the tab is a, a reasonable choice for people who watch a lot of video as long as it's all pirated because there's almost no legal content available. <laughs> You'll notice when you read through here yeah. that it, it takes hmm. a very kind of negative slant and you know while I while I agree with some of his points uh, not all of them necessarily he says uh, developers come generally when at least two of these three criteria are met one developers themselves use and love the platform's products two the platform has a large installed base and three developers can make decent money on the platform and basically he uh, he, he raises the issue of, of the chicken and egg scenario on at least for developing with tablet maybe this is a little different than what it is on the phone but at least with the tablet you aren't going to get the developers to develop for the platform if they don't think that there are enough users mm -hmm. there to make it worth their time you aren't going to get the users there uh, in in large numbers onto the platform if there aren't excellent tablet optimized apps out there for uh, to pull them into so it's kind of an interesting uh, you know it's, it's interesting that it's at, at odds with itself and, and I realized that maybe Android on the phone as a platform had this and it no longer seems to it's kind of worked its way out tablet is a little bit more of a niche product so I don't know what do you think about that Jason I, I think you know he's kind of hit the uh, the nail on the head but for any developer out there listening and, and saying well I, I have ideas Develop it because you're going to get one of the premier spots that are that are almost coveted at this point to be in the marketplace and say this is an awesome tablet app. There aren't very many of them right now, and I think his point is is very valid. But I think this is going to be a very short term kind of thing, and I think it's a very short sighted way to look at it because this this we had this problem originally when Android first launched, as you as you just said. But I think you know as far as the tablet is concerned. You know they're going to be there. Apps are going to be there. They need to be there. There's going to be hundreds of Android tablets flooding the market, and you would be crazy to not start developing Android apps for the tablet now. Is hundreds of uh, Android tablets enough? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I mean, no, no, that's not, the problem. I mean, here. hundreds of different kinds of Android tablets. Oh, okay. I don't mean hundreds <laughs> of the market. Yeah. Well, I, no, like, I know oh, for a fact. Sold a couple hundred. <laughs> I know for a fact there's I at least five thousand tablets out there. Well, I think yeah. that's I think that's the problem. You know, we're talking about back in the day when Android first started, and you know, I, you know, the iOS platform was relatively new. I think the gap was a little closer when we're talking about phones. Mm -hmm. But when the iPad launched, and even now, you know, uh, and I know that's why um, Google rushed out the Zoom. They have just they're a monster right now. I mean, um, I'm sorry, but. Mo there's a ton of things that you just can't do on an Android tablet yet. I'm not saying in six months, you know, down the road that it'll be the same. But right now, if you're going to buy a tablet and you want all the fun experience, I mean, it's hard for me to say get the um, get anything but an iPad uh, unless you're a developer and you want to, you know, get your apps on there and you you need to work and you need to understand, you know, Honeycomb or Ice Cream Sandwich it's coming up. So I don't know. I mean, it's it's something. I mean, it's interesting because I think, unlike iTunes, and I don't know, I could be wrong because I I, I have an iPad, but I don't spend a lot of time in iTunes. Um, but in the Android marketplace, they list the number of downloads. And mm -hmm. if you look, and and I know there's a lot of obfuscation of this because a lot of the apps work both on tablets and phones. But I mean, Pulse, you know, has w a million to five million downloads. Well, that's what you know. I'm you know? wondering about. This is what I'm thinking. You know, I'm constantly thinking like, why aren't there more apps like Pulse that have ported over, you know, from iOS? Because it looks gorgeous. It's exactly. I mean, it's pretty much carbon copy of you know the iOS. I mean, there's a, maybe a couple few things that are different, but for the most part, that's what you. That's what. It, 
if you're watching the video stream, there we're showing Pulse. That's what you're going to get if you have an iPad. So I'm just waiting for all the rest of the apps to come to come over. What's taking so long, Jason? So so Apple Bob, are, are you talking? Are you talking about coming over from iOS or yes. coming to the tablet from Android? Uh, either way, actually. Either way. Either, either way. way. Okay. So so the iOS to to um, Android is kind of a big question. It's kind of the, like the money thing. It's all that stuff that you yeah, know, that Jason has just talked about. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a financial thing because yeah. you just spent 100 hours, 200 hours, yeah. 400 hours, whatever you, your app took to get to market. Mm -hmm. You have to do it again. And unless you're using, you know, app tools like, uh, oh, I'm going to get in trouble for not remembering this, PhoneGap. <laughs> uh, uh, PhoneGap is a, is a tool that allows you to use JavaScript and HTML and it'll compile out native applications. Mm -hmm. Yes, it makes your app look very generic, but it works. Mm -hmm. uh, but it just depends on your use case. But it takes a lot of time to develop different assets, different everything yeah. for iOS versus Android. And a lot of people pick. Okay. Uh, and it's not a question of money because obviously the developer wants to make money. But if you already have a huge user base and you have to continually implementing and you they want version 2 now or mm -hmm. yesterday you don't necessarily have the time to go back and do android and and if well you see that's that that's the i'm sorry to interrupt you not to interrupt no. you but that that's okay. the problem it's it's that it's that idea to go back and do android exactly and, and it's yeah. that mindset exactly. where people have to realize that android is a viable platform and you've got i mean like this is i think the irony of the fact that this is by the guy who does instapaper and there's no instapaper app there's for no instapaper app and, i know and and I there's, no, like there's no really instagram app yet there's no there are these great apps that are yeah. on ios which i love instapaper it's fantastic yeah. But the thing is, is that they it's part of this iOS you know n looking looking down on anything other than exactly. Apple products and I'm sorry chat room if you're getting upset at me for saying it or whatever but there is a bias against anything not Apple we are in a we are in a culture that loves to follow Apple and loves to follow whatever Steve Jobs says like sheep and that's one of the reasons why I like Android is because it, it gives you so many different options you can define your experience way more you can, you have more control over things both as a developer and as a user and I think that if some of these develop if the Instapaper developer would take a second to realize that he could f realize that you know uh, Instapaper app on Android could be really viable and drive people to the platform and be touted as one of those apps that is a killer app and a must have for tablets. Yep. I just want my Rant Netflix over. app. Sorry. I Sorry. want my Netflix Slash app. Rant. Yeah, we're, we're all renting now. I want my Netflix app for the tablet, for my honeycomb yes. tablet. I want Instapaper. Um, I want some of the games. NG Moco, please bring We Rule right away. I'm waiting for you. I mean, there's just, there's honestly like maybe five or ten apps that if they moved over, from iOS, done. I'm over. I don't need my iPad anymore. Because, I mean, honestly, with all the billions of apps they have on iOS, I don't use all of them. But there are some key ones. Flipboard would be fantastic. Flipboard would have. be amazing to have on my tablet. I would, so. I, would stop, I would stop using my iPad. Absolutely. I mean, like, I have an iPad for development and for QA and things like that. But honestly, I would, if, if all those apps that I use on my iPad on a daily basis, I could port over and use them to Zoom, I would use them in a second. Yeah. Exactly. So. Me too. Yeah. You hit the nail on the head. Absolutely. When you said that there's this, this kind of, uh, cult. stigma. St yeah, it's cult stigma, cult mentality. Uh, it's a cult, yeah. That, yeah, cult mentality <laughs> that prevents people th that think Android's a second nature thing. I completely think that if as soon as certain uh, certain mindsets get changed where where not everyone has an iOS device like I had a, I had a meeting the other day where he was like well I want to do uh, iPhone and if there's time we'll do Android and I said you you're doing this wrong. You want to do Android and if you have if you have time do iPhone. There are more Android phones. Or de or develop them concurrently. Or I mean that's a well, yeah. I, Unfortunately, I, I know it gets, I know really, it gets yeah. complicated. I know, and and from a development standpoint, there's a lot of different philosophies as to which platform is better to develop on, and there are tools and things like that, like you mentioned. But I mean, it just and that's the thing. I, I know we're going to get a lot of hate mail from people who are you know about us complaining about Apple or iOS. I went for market like saturation though. Yeah, I think that's. I, I think those are all issues that are pertinent to it. But I think that as much as developing for OS X as for Windows as a platform, it's it's you know if if you want to build a business and make money, it behooves you to make your software available on anywhere you can do it on. Yeah. So. Agreed. All Are right. We all ranted rant, enough. Rant over. Sorry. I'm rant, rant, rant. So I promise. <laughs> no, it's all good. I'm sure that was like be our first major like hyper awesome rant. Awesome discussion. It? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I liked it. Sorry. Point we're of achievement unlocked. <laughs> yeah. So this is not the only thing that we're doing a little differently on this show. We decided that uh, the previous shows, you know. We, we run we tend to run a little long we're sorry about that uh, but as a result the fact that the feedbacks always at the end means that the feedback ends up getting cut so what we're gonna try for the next few episodes and see if you guys like it is we're gonna sprinkle them throughout the show that way at least we get to some of your feedback and we can kind of break up uh, break up the the flow of the show a little bit and uh, you know hopefully you like that so so uh, this first email to AAA at twit.tv uh, is from level 380 and it's a kind of a long email so I'll summarize it but essentially it's a it's a tip for uh, you know people who 
might buy their phone in one country and uh, end up living in another or whatever. Uh, Level 380 wrote in basically to say you can change the locale of your phone. And I'm surprised that Android doesn't have this built into it so that you could select a different locale. But for example, if you bought your phone in the UK, but you live in Australia as Level 380 did, you need some way to tell your phone that your local search is shouldn't be bringing up UK results, but rather Australia for things like map and for things like search and all that kind of stuff. More locale too is in the, is it's an app, it's in the Android market and it can do just that. Level 380 says that his phone now thinks he's back in Australia when he does a Google or map search. And uh, this app kind of helped to facilitate that. You're frowning, Jason. No, I'm not frowning. I'm, <laughs> I'm slightly confused. Um, unless it's carrier imposed. Android itself uh, dynamically chooses your locale based on GPS. That's, yeah, I was going to ask about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's what what, what if you have GPS turned off, though? Uh, no, it just does based on the last place you had GPS turned on or the last place it figured out it was via Wi-Fi. Okay, or what, but what if you don't have Wi-Fi on? I mean, does it use your cell, your cell signal as well to triangulate? Or? Oh, yeah, it uses your cell or your Wi-Fi. It yeah. can use cell tower, um, and it can use Wi-Fi, and it can use a combination of the two, and it can use GPS. If the device has none of those, it doesn't actually use its locale at all. It just turns it off. So when you do a search, it's generic. Interesting, except that, except that there's an app that actually manages it. So I mean, yeah, it's weird because it's funny because I've had the same kind of experience in all my travels where sometimes my, my phone thinks I'm still in San Francisco when I'm actually in New York or when I was in the yeah. UK. It was, it was called kind of haywire and stuff like that. So, I mean, is it, you know, sometimes, yeah, I think, and, and Jason, I think you're, you're mainly right in that the phone does work, but I think there's got to be enough of a need if an app does exist to do it unless this app is just, uh, you know, doing a magic trick. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. I think what the, the app is actually doing is, is forcing a locale update yeah. Um, because I think that's when you when you open your phone and you're in a new location and your GPS hasn't updated yet, like when you get off a plane, it can take a second. So it's not necessarily not working. It's just not working as fast as you'd like. And I think the locale kind of circumvents that. Yeah. Cool. All right. Oh, yeah, I was, you know, I've never really encountered this issue, but, uh, you know, he spelled it out pretty well in the email. I was like, okay, well, that sounds like an issue that a lot of people might, might potentially run into. So check it out uh, in the Android mar market. And uh, we'll take a quick break right now and thank our sponsor, Netflix. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by Netflix, uh, streaming thousands of TV episodes and movies directly to you instantly, uh, which means you save time, money, and hassle. There are several ways to instantly access these streaming movies uh, and TV shows with Netflix. You can watch them on your Mac, your PC, your iPad. You can watch it on your iPhone. Some Android phones can now uh, run the Netflix app as well, so check that out. Uh, if you have a gaming console, Xbox 360, PS3, Nintendo Wii, you can watch Netflix right on your TV. And, of course, if you're not a gamer, you know, it's on Roku. It's on all of these, you know, Apple TV box. They're inexpensive. They're easy to use, so you can watch these instant streaming uh, titles. Uh, you can watch movies, TVs, uh, TV shows, and you can begin watching a movie uh, on one device and then switch to a completely different device if you like, and you can cancel any time. So you can try Netflix today for 30 days free. Go to netflix.com slash twit, and be sure to use that URL specifically when you sign up for the free trial. It's netflix.com slash twit. That's for 30 days free. And we thank Netflix for their support of twit, and we hope you enjoy watching instantly with Netflix. I have, I have a Netflix story if you want. Ooh, yeah, let's hear go it. Go for it. Well, this past weekend, I was in New York, and I went to go see the Glee Live show with my family, oh, with yeah. my sister and my nieces, which was awesome. But we were coming out of the arena and stuck in traffic, and it's 11 o'clock, and the kids were asleep in the back, and it's dark, and everyone's, you know, that post kind of, you know, concert tiredness. We're just sitting in traffic. And so I just pulled out my phone, I opened up Netflix and picked up the episode of my so-called life I had stopped watching earlier that day oh, yeah. and resumed it, put my headphones in and just watched. So, nice. Yeah, yeah. So Netflix on the phone saved me some entertainment For on the drive home. Man. So yeah, That's awesome. Right on. We'll check it out. Netflix.com slash twit. And uh, we'll just go ahead and move right into hardware. All right. Well, first up, last week there was sort of... Um, uh, I don't know, exclusive or, you know, rumored drop about the Google Nexus 4G. Dun, 720p dun, dun. display, 4G LTE, Android 4.0, next generation dual core uh, display is said to be having this monster sized screen and it won't feature any physical Android menu buttons on the bottom. There'll be a 4G LTE radio, 1 gig of RAM, 10, uh, 1080p HD video capture and playback, a 1 megapixel front facing camera, a 5 megapixel rear camera. There's lots and lots here. Oh, you yeah. know that, that uh, email Bells that we answered last week. Maybe this person might want this phone. Oh, that's true. Um, yeah. yeah. The uh, 5 megapixel uh, camera, however, is said to be an advanced 5 megapixel sensor delivering class leading image quality. 
quality in addition to superior low light performance. Sounds pretty the nice Google to Nexus me. The Google Nexus 4G will run f Android 4.0 ice cream sandwich. Right. Anybody want this? You know what? I kind of don't. What? I, I kind of do. Wow. You do? Absolutely. Uh, you know, maybe I'm just stuck on the Samsung Galaxy S2 that we've been talking about a little bit pre-show. Uh, that is an Apple epic bomb. Phone, though. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I think know. I'm Sounds pretty that. nice to me. My, my only complaint is that I'm pretty positive it's not going to be Verizon. Uh, yeah, it's probably going to be Sprint, right? Actually, it uh, would be Verizon. Why would, would it? it be? Because Sprint does not have LTE and they won't until oh, 2012. That's true. So the Ooh, only other point. carrier could be on is oh. AT&T. <laughs> Yeah. Would, would be Verizon, not AT&T. Verizon. No, Verizon or AT&T because Verizon, so, so oh. Verizon LTE is already up and running. No, um, Verizon LTE is already up and running, and AT&T LTE will be out by the end of the year. So it could be one of those two. Yeah, and I yeah. have a feeling it's going to be AT&T more so than That's, Verizon because yeah. AT&T's network is supposed to launch at the same time as Ice Cream Sandwich. Oh. Mm. That that's, what they call, right. that's what they call synergy. <laughs> synergy. I think that's, that's synergy. I read that somewhere. <laughs> Merchandising. <laughs> uh, that's the word of the day. All right. Who's going to? It was AT and T. I don't know. No, you're not going to get it. Uh, yeah, it's, get. yeah. Unfortunately, I, I, would, lo I am locked to Verizon. So. Why are you locked to Verizon? Um, it's a, it's a long story, but basically, <laughs> my, my, my mother-in-law has has her phone through us, and it's. Understand. We're, we're not switching. <laughs> <laughs> Understand. So, so the thing about AT and T, and everyone gets a lot of flack, Ooh. gives AT and T a lot of flack. Um, I really like AT and T, actually. What? Yeah, I know, right? It's kind of weird. I like GSM. Did I you have a BlackBerry phone? Is that why? <laughs> Only BlackBerry people wow. never complain about AT and T. Gotta pull out the BlackBerry card <laughs> straight to the heart. But she was right, wasn't she? <laughs> no. <Nope. laughs> Got me, everybody. No, I, I think I think AT and T does good things in certain areas and not so good things in others but yeah. unfortunately physics has a lot to do with that okay. but anyway that's not why i'm talking about at&t at&t lte will be better than verizon's lte no <laughs> whoa and you heard it, it here well it, it only makes sense well, verizon why? came because out the verizon came out first with a first generate with yep. third generation yeah, lte and their at&t is rolling out current generation lte devices they're going to be probably 15 to 20 percent faster mm -hmm. and it'll be also have more coverage because AT&T is going out and they're not just going to say all right it's available in this four four inches of San Francisco now they're going to roll it out to the whole large metro areas very quickly it's in their best interest too, to compete with Verizon yeah they hmm. have to eventually well I for one hope that they do release this on Verizon <laughs> but I think you might be right or it could be used That's on both because it is LTE yeah, all right. Maybe so. All right. Cool. We'll all move right. on to, uh, let's see here. Oh, so well, speak, speaking, of ta speaking of tablets, um, some interesting tablet uh, hardware news. I can't pronounce this. The who are we? Huawei. 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 No. I can't do it. H-U-A-W-E-I. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, so H-U-A-W-E-I, they introduced uh, the world's first uh, Honeycomb 3.2 OS running tablet. 3.2. And so you might ask, what's the difference between Honeycomb 3.1 and Honeycomb 3.2? Well, 3.2 appears to be um, specifically tailored to 7-inch tablets as opposed to 10-inch tablets, which I feel isn't worth a point revision. Hmm. I feel like it's a 3.1A or something. But anyway, but, uh, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so, so it's a neat little 7-inch tablet that if you look at the video here and you look at some of the photos, looks very Apple-esque in its design. Um, at least it uh, looks it looks very uh, new iPhone-y kind of design uh, with the edges oh, yeah. Yeah. and things like that. Yeah, kind of but like um, aluminum brushed aluminum. Exactly, back, exactly. Yeah. But um, but it's only 10.5 millimeters or 0.41 inches thick, um, which is uh, actually thinner than the Galaxy Tab, which is crazy. Um, oh, and it uh, it's got a, t a 217 pixels per inch IPS capacitive touch panel, 8 gig of internal storage, GPS. 1.3 megapixel front-facing camera, 5 megapixel rear-facing camera, which has got autofocus and HD video recording. Um, it's got Wi-Fi, HSPA+, uh, 3G, Bluetooth, HDMI out, micro SD card slot. This sounds like the 7-inch tablet to die for. So it seems pretty cool. It looks so, cool. Yeah. Is it real? So, it yeah, was, well, no, it, it was, was just announced. It was, just it was announced, announced at, at, at Communic, Communic Asia conference in Singapore. So yeah. okay. w whether that means we ever get it is another question, but... <laughs> Who knows? Well, I want to see a real one. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's in the, in interesting the wild. that they tout three dot two, and I, you know, I just I had no idea that three dot one wouldn't be. I, I just thought it was tablet optimized, not that it, you know, it was everything except seven point, you know, seven point one inch tablet sizes or whatever. I didn't yeah. know that. I actually well, so think that's the biggest thing that makes it not real for me because I've <laughs> never heard of ten point or excuse me three point uh, two. 
I, yeah. I had that, neither that's before, a, that's before a new this one started on blowing that, up the feeds today. It's, it's that's everywhere a, right that's now. That's why it seemed like a weird kind of thing. But according to according to the, the <laughs> source that we got on this, it um, sounds like it's going to be available Q3 of this year, which is kind of crazy. They've got no plans to do a, to do a, a Wi-Fi only model. And the one detractor to it is apparently only the six hours battery life. Hmm. So that's a little short. That's it. That's, yeah. Well, sleep. if the battery life is not good, then boom. Done. Yeah, so that'll kill it. All right, well, f well f as for uh, tablets that we do actually have here, um, a little while back, a couple of weeks ago, this this little bad boy with the with the three D. We talked uh, about it a couple times. Yeah, we talked yeah. about it a couple times. The G Slate, and uh, I've kind of had some time to play around with it and everything. And Eileen, you spent some time with yeah. this and and got you kind of gleaned your opinion of it. Um, you know, it's a little bit smaller than the Samsung Galaxy Tab ten point mm -hmm. one, and feels a little bit heavier, maybe. So it kind of just kind of, I don't but know. Lighter than, lighter than the Zoom. Light, yeah, well, it doesn't take uh, much. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you're right. It is lighter than the Zoom. But the fact that it's smaller and still a little heavier than what I'm used to with the Galaxy Tab just kind of makes it feel even heavier, even though it's not that bad. The one-hand experience in it is actually really nice. And when you're reading, right? Yeah, I, yeah. I, you know, I would almost opt for this size over the large one. Right. Uh, yeah, for that's something what like How big that, is that? Especially. Uh, this is 8.1, I believe. Yeah. Is that right? So I think so. Um, so, yeah, uh, I, I've actually, the, the funny thing about this, the thing that really strikes me about playing around with this device is, of course, you know, its, it's trick is the 3D, uh, the 3D cameras on the back and that you can film 3D, right? Which is, it feels like a total gimmick, and it actually really is. There's really not a whole lot of UI uh, stuff in the software that's really 3D. So you're not, you know, you're not putting on the glasses to operate your machinery. You know what I mean? 8.9. 8.9, yeah. sorry. <clears throat> um, but, however, having said that, having this for a couple of weeks and having a 3D recording capable device in my house has been kind of cool. <laughs> Have you seen the 3D image, 3D from it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, to, they give you glasses. Oh, they do we, give you yeah, glasses. Yeah, they give you glasses oh. when you purchase the slate. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. You get glasses. In fact, I have those right Let's here. Wear those, Jason. I, I suppose I could put those on because I have them. Um, <laughs> oh, they're the, <laughs> the blue oh, and red yeah. glasses. Yeah. They're the old school kind. Oh, of. they're yeah. totally old school. That's yes. awesome. So, um, so I've I've done a lot of just. <laughs> You know, 3D <laughs> video recording around the house. I'm like, let's take a still of this. I'm like, I don't, I don't know the next time I'm going to have a 3D recording capable device. Who knows? Maybe sometime soon there'll be they'll be in everything. I kind of doubt that. Uh, it just probably just reminds me of Dr. Jacoby in Twin Peaks. <laughs> Right, the, oh, the crazy psychiatrist who wore the 3D off. glasses. Yeah. We can finally play Dinosaur Adventure, the the old school like 1995 Dinosaur Adventure game on the tablet if it supports 3D. Oh, did, uh, hmm. Never dinosaur, mind. The dinosaur Sorry, Adventure. Sorry, it. it was like an old PC CD-ROM oh, game. Okay. But it was in 3D? It was in 3D. It was like oh, 1995 okay. in 3D. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so sorry. I, I guess we could. Yeah, I, Somebody will have to uh, see an, yeah, Android as a, as a viable platform and port that over. Who knows? I would <laughs> be surprised. To bring back all the mid-'90s 3D games. Yes. That ever <laughs> 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 exactly. <laughs> yeah, but I found anyways, the tablet for me. I actually really enjoyed it. Um, do I like it better than what I have right now? I don't no, they're, they're kind of, kind of borderline between both of them. Yeah. I really do think that the 3D is a total gimmick, and it's yeah. not worth buying the device for specifically. Having said that, the form factor is really nice. Yeah, and the hardware it's itself. It feels pretty solid, and uh, you know the performance of it actually d it didn't really suffer for me. It yeah. was pretty smooth. Does so. it have an interchangeable back? Or, excuse me, removable back? Oh, the little silvery no, thing? No, right there's there? just little stickers. Oh. Um, Sorry, if, if it can change the battery, that's kind of epic. Well, that would be cool. I've n none of these tablets are openable. There you yeah. go. I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know what I'm looking at here. <laughs> uh, card. SIM card. Uh, yeah, SIM card. Oh, SIM card. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it's because it is door. a 4G. It is a 4G uh, on T-Mobile, right. which really came in handy, actually, when I was stuck in the car for an hour. Uh, a few weeks ago. So, anyway, so I, you know, it, it's it was a good device. I don't know if it's like the premier uh, have to have tablet, but uh, I'm, I'm happy that I spent my time with it. So, yeah. hey, I'm lo I'm loving the zoom more and more. I play with it, even though it's a brick and heavy. I mean, like <laughs> I was, I might have been playing a very old Xbox game that everyone's playing the sequel for, and oh. I might have been stuck on it. I might have been looking at walkthrough videos on YouTube on my tablet while I was playing Xbox <laughs> I on the couch. Been. I might have been oh. hypothetically. I might have just finished Portal, maybe. But um, <laughs> anyway, so. No, but it was really handy to be on the couch and be able to access stuff while not having to just go back to the computer or switch over to the Google TV or anything like that. So nice. I, I like the tablet living. 
Yeah. Radical. All right. Well, Jason, it's it's good to have you here for uh, especially for this next voicemail because it involves rooting, and I know that you are knowledgeable in in that realm. So I'm going to go ahead and play this uh, voicemail. It's from anonymous, and it's about rooting the Atrix 4G. Hey, all about Android. <clears throat> I'd like to know. I have Motorola Atrix 4G, and I haven't rooted it yet. I would like to root it. But I am. I, w- I would probably like to use the Super One Click uh, route uh, to do that. But uh, what are some assurances that it will not fail, or what should I do before a route? All right, thank you. Bye. Enjoy the show. Bye. That's the Atrix right there. Turn down that volume. That's really noisy. <laughs> um, yeah. So. I guess this was this would be just kind of a good time to talk about in general uh, what you do to prepare for root because you're kind of taking a big step and I, I'm sure a lot of people are kind of afraid you know kind of nervous to take that step. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, first of all, in the show notes, which you can find at twit.tv slash aaa, I will include a link. You, you've probably already found it, but how to root Atrix 4G with Super One Click, which kind of makes it easy. My advice, uh, really, when it comes to rooting for the first time, is First and foremost, just make sure that your battery is fully charged before you begin the process. The probably absolute <laughs> worst thing that could possibly happen, and I'm sure it's been done plenty of times, is that your battery dies midway through root, bricking your phone. And you know, there's probably some way to unbrick it at some point, uh, but you could do a lot of damage to your phone and not know what exactly you just did if it powers down in the middle of that. Um, Are you talking about rooting or roaming? Uh, well, rooting, but no, not no, the Well, I well, mean... Doesn't kind of. root ramen in a while come thing. after rooting? I mean, yeah, like, ramen comes after root rooting. Ramen? But why would you? Why would you root without ROM, just to access the command line, or why would you? Well, no, you have to root in order to rom. But what I meant was, okay. as far as charging the battery, when you do the root and you don't have a full battery with Super One Click, it just kind of fails, and you, you're no, so it's you not can do damage. Bad. You can do damage to your. I'm not saying don't back up. I'm just saying it's not nearly as as, as phone ending as uh, yeah. as roming. Good. I'm happy you're I think here. I just coined uh, roming. That's yeah, it. You did, that's but that's a, a good, that's a good distinction to make, though. I mean, that's important. Yeah, so, yeah absolutely. Um, let's see here. Also, uh, you know, just just keep in mind that when you're rooting. Oh no, you know what? This next this next instructional thing I, I put down here is totally roaming. You're right. I confused the two, and I feel like such a noob. Uh, so I'm going <laughs> to skip that. Uh, but I did want to use this as a, as a, a way to mention that the Atrix 4G actually has a locked bootloader. So if you do decide that you want to then install a new ROM, um, there is which you have done, <laughs> which I have done. All right. So I have an Atrix. I didn't say it was impossible. It's possible. It's There's actually just some... really really easy. Oh, okay, nice. Um, Go so for it. I I. I had He's to unlock right the boot. I, I've just done this. It no, took this me, is it why took you're me here. six hours to figure it out. I mean, it wasn't. It took you six it hours. It took me six hours to do this <laughs> okay, process. Okay, so our it listener, wasn't, we're going to give it to you for free. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so it's it's actually kind of it's laid out. There's, a, I'm sure I'll provide the link so you guys can find it in the show notes. Show notes. So the the ROM you're looking for is Ginger Blur. Ginger Blur is uh, is the ROM that you're going for that will give you. St- stock gingerbread but it just looks like stock gingerbread mixed in with moto blur and it is as close to gingerbread as you can get without actually being gingerbread because it's not gingerbread it's just it's 2.2 themed to look like 2.3 um but you need uh because it's motorola with a locked bootloader you have to hook it up to their moto dev tools which only run on pc uh, and yeah, this is the one time like you can you can totally raw root with super one click only for pc um, and it will work, um, and it should be just as simple as clicking, you know, root, and it will root your phone. Uh, but as far as roming your phone, that's kind of a process, and uh, it, there's a tutorial online that explains it way better than I could in this time that we have. But um, it's called Ginger Blur, and I think they're up to like version 19 by now. The thumbs up to the developer who does that because he literally has a new version every three days. Here's the uh, tutorial that I had found online. I don't know if it's the one uh, you're talking about, but it's the super one-click process. So, like I said, we'll put that in the show notes. And then, yeah, Ginger Blur. That was uh, even further than I had uh, discovered in my little in my little uh, searching around. So, all right, cool. Um, well, with that, let's uh, move on to the app segment. All right, so Ron, a uh, little while back, uh, you and you haven't even had a chance to, uh, you know, to kind of celebrate your victory, but you won the swipe challenge. 
I was Pretty dying much. in New York. As I, it was getting, I got tweeted at me and stuff like that, that <laughs> I won the poll while I was gone. I was like, Congratulations. Ah, the, the irony that I wasn't here to celebrate my victory. Yeah. But yes, so, so in the keyboard replacement uh, poll, uh, Swipe was the victor. And honestly, I can't take the credit for it. I mean, it's kind of, a, it's kind of like stacking the deck. But no sooner than I celebrate uh, my, my current Swipe victory, but uh, we get news of Swipe 3.0 getting support for Honeycomb. And not only that, but they put together the people behind swipe put together a very intense video to explain it that. Dun, 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 if you're watching dun, dun, we're dun, dun, looking dun, at a honeycomb dun, dun. tablet we're looking at um typing uh yep. I, using with, the tablet yeah a little bit more on the tablet yeah resizable keyboards you can switch them from left so to right epic. to center it's cool. it's so epic of course yeah. you have to be a swipe you know a fan of the swipe method uh which i i don't know i it just doesn't doesn't sell to, to me, you swipe I don't swipe. No, I don't swipe either. I, I, got, I, got <laughs> I can't do it. I got to admit, since part of that part of that whole challenge, I moved over because I had I used swipe when it came out, and then I got my new phone. I was too lazy to install it because the install is a little kludgy, you know, because you got to go to their site and stuff like that. And I didn't reinstall it, but for the challenge, I reinstalled it. When I was in New York, I was a texting monster. I was swiping left and right. And it was great, and I love the changes and and the stuff or or the stuff they're introducing in this version 3.0 for tablets. And I love the idea of developers focusing on something and doing it well. They're just gonna do a swipeable keyboard and be the best keyboard they can do and i think this video shows that i can't wait to get this on my tablet it's gonna be awesome nice all right and then eileen you have yeah. uh, something that you've been using you know i wanted to uh talk about this app mostly because it was specifically specifically developed for android um and i've been waiting for this uh this app to come out of beta and um you know some people are saying well here's your instagram replacement eileen i'm like no it doesn't have the same kind of social but it comes pretty close what i do like about it here and it also light box is what it's called light box is what it's called thank you uh, <laughs> i'm just gonna start talking about right. it without telling you it's free in the android marketplace and uh now there are a couple things. So you could take a picture. Uh, what I'm showing you now is uh, my light box. And what happens is, is when I log in and I connect it to Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, whatever, what I'm seeing are people, you know, uh, my friends, their Twit pics, their Facebook photos, and I could see these offline once I've already loaded them. So uh, this guy that I follow has been taking pictures at them, Much Music uh, Video Awards in Canada. Uh, I like that. I just like kind of scrolling and looking at photos, um, sort of instantaneously without going to actually t go into Twitter. Um, and then there's actually some popular photos that they have in the news. Um, okay, I see Anna Paquin's here. I'm very excited. New York Times posted this photo because there's an article associated. And then once I tap on that, it ports me over to the article, which is really, really cool. Now, when I'm taking pictures, I'm going to take a picture right now of, uh, let's see, maybe I'll take a picture of Jason Applebaum. Um, oh, let me show you this really quick. I'm um, going to go into camera mode. This is going to go, there's camera mode. Now I'm going to take a quick picture of Jason. Hello. There we go. <laughs> and now I mean, let's go back to the phone. And you can see that there's a ton of uh, different filters, which is pretty cool. Could retro in. Maybe I'll sepia Let's him. Cyano, you know. Oh, how about red scale? Look at you. So gives you all these kind of options, which are uh, really cool. And I love the UI. Great filters. I think it needs a few more social integration, but I don't think that's what they're looking for. They want to. They don't want to replace your Twitter client. They don't want to replace your Facebook. They want to give you another way to take pictures. And uh, I, at least in this evolution right now. Um, and it also wirelessly, wirelessly syncs with your Honeycomb tablet. So all that stuff that I was showing you before, the uh, news and pictures, mm -hmm. you can see that on your tablet. You could just kind of run it, and it'll work. So I'm going to post this. Okay. Quick question um, for you. Yeah. Does it integrate with other like menus and that you've seen around your Android phone? Like share with? Yeah, uh, share with. Share well, with is a good one. let's see. Good one. Let's see. Uh, I just wanted to hit OK, and then I'm going to just hump. I'm just curious if they did chose to go hyper integrated or not. No, it's really just these Facebook, uh, Twitter, Tumblr, and Foursquare right now. But let's take a look at the settings. I'm gonna buy Jason. Okay, so if you go into settings here, this is pretty much it. Uh, this, your social networks. You can see your profiles. They tell you what your profile is online. If you want to look at it there, set your profile photo. Uh, enable automatic syncing. Syncing uh, only on Wi-Fi. Upload pretty much it. Those so are the enable automatic syncing is just any photos I've taken in the last hour yeah. since that 
to okay yeah or you know you can change the frequency 15 30 minutes one hour two four eight hours okay i i i like the app um it is not an instagram replacement but i love the fact kudos to them for starting with android first and i hear they're going to try and make some sort of flipboard kind of app as well so rock on lightbox people uh it's a good start i think it's a decent app um you know i've been using it here and here and there uh it's got great filters and um it's free what are you gonna say <laughs> Nice. Yeah, we got another email. This one comes from Dennis Patrick, who says, I'm not sure if you guys have mentioned this music app in your show. Yeah. It's called Feedies, F-E-D-E apostrophe S, music app. And actually, it's been, the name's been changed to Uber Music. So if you're looking for it, you can call it Uber Music. And it looks like the Windows Phone 7 uh, phone music player. It's in the alpha stage, but it's very good. And you can find it on ubermusic.com. And uh, Jason's installed it here on his app, and it very much does look like the uh, look like the, the Windows uh, music player. Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of ridiculous how much it, it looks like that is the Windows, Windows Phone, Phone music 7. player. If you like that sort of thing, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <you> could... <laughs> right, like if you really want to emulate, it's funny how much stuff there is on Android that emulates like iPhone and Windows Phone <laughs> Seven. You can theme things to look just like other OSs, but I guess well, that's kind of the beauty of Android is that you can do that. Well, I think yeah. it's funny that I think it's funny that this is called that as the Windows. 7 music player because I'm pretty sure the Windows 7 music player was based on the Zune. Yeah. Uh, at least at least the 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 the, font, the use of fonts and the organization and the swiping and stuff like that. So and the thing is is that if you've ever met a diehard Zune user, they love that thing. So uh, it's nice to see that if you you know if the Zune is indeed dead as as we know it is and the Windows 7 phone didn't become the 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 industry leader that Microsoft promised it would be. If you like this interface, go for it. Yeah, and I gotta uh, say I, I haven't I haven't given it a full run through. I installed it just the other night when I read this email, and I I actually really do like the look of it. Wh whether it looks like Windows Phone 7 or not, it's really responsive. It's a it it certainly organizes things a little a little bit neater than the uh, the Google Music app. You know, but the the problem with this music app, and I think this it's just going to be this in general, is that if the apps don't work with the Google um, Music Beta, the the music in the cloud that Google has, then it's going to be really hard for me to use that music player over over theirs, even if theirs isn't really the best one out there. Which exactly. Isn't. And I, and I was just, I mean, and I know I keep harping on it, but I was traveling last week. I was away from my, I didn't bring my hard drive with all my music because now I've got it all up in, all up in Google Music. And I got to tell you, being on the road and having access to all my music via the cloud and Google Music was amazing. It was just mm -hmm. like anywhere I wanted oh, to so go. Good. I plugged in, I could listen to anything. It was awesome. But I did find myself thinking about, like, there were times where I'm standing, you know, I'm standing and I'm walking through Manhattan. I'm like, you know, I wish this app looked better. You know, yeah. I wish the UI was a little better. Yes, it kind of does that random color change and you know things like that. But but like it, the bells and whistles, it's really limited. And if that's your if that's what you like, that's your sort of thing, then go for something like Uber Music. But as far as access to the to my actual cloud based music, whether it's on Amazon or Google, you can't beat that. So yeah, I mean, yeah. The, you know, Uber Music does some things that are that are really cool. Like if you're listening to an artist, instead of having the background, like it'll have the album art, and instead of having the background be a solid color or with Google yeah. Music, it kind of does a a take of the cover art and kind of smears it and blurs it this yeah. actually hits the internet and downloads like a band photo or something like which that. which is Pulls awesome like that's kind cool. of high quality uh you know photo photos of the band you're listening to that may not you know ship with the products and so it's just kind of keeps it fresh and it also scrabbles to laugh at the last fm uh, which is key which i had to hack my browser to do for google music right. but I, I realized that it wasn't doing my phone so i need to figure that out yeah but it, Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, no, no, after you. No, go. No, I just saw in the chat room, Sideways points out something very, uh, very important, or I, I think so, because I love Launcher Pro. Uh, yep. This is the same developer of Launcher Pro, oh, so, nice. which is very fitting for our uh, our uh, Android arena, arena today. today but yeah. before we move on, though, on the topic of Google Music, I need to bring up one thing, because I need the community to chime in for me. I tweeted this out yesterday. I got so excited after using Google Music while I was on the road. I came home, and I don't know why I didn't think about this earlier, but I'm like, hey, I have a Google TV running Android and have Chrome browser on it and I've got Google Music, let me go use it and I can pull up the Google Music website on the Google TV but it doesn't play back, no audio plays at all. I wasn't sure if anybody, and I've heard, I've heard, I've heard, it, I've heard it works on the Logitech review but I haven't, I couldn't find any, I could oh, literally, I, it does. I could, I'll, I'll try it then. It does. I have I, that. Right, but no, I, but I heard it works on the review. So don't, I mean, you just confirmed that for me. But I, <laughs> I, I searched for like 10 minutes, and well, admittedly, it's a short period of time, but still, I found no one online talking about it not working on the, on the Sony Blu ray player. And so I'm like, am I the only person who's tried this? I can't be. So I mean, there's it, not that many people that have access to Google Music, Google Mu or music 
beta by Google. Yeah, yeah. kind of a mouthful. And, yes. And then also having the, the Sony Blu-ray box that I have with the Google TV in it. But so if you have that and you found the same the similar thing or it's working for you, tweet me, write me at, at RonXO and let me know just because I'm trying to get to the bottom of it because I really – because if I could do that, then I can eliminate – my Apple TV and iTunes and AirPlay, and I could do run all my music through Google and through my stereo. It'd be beautiful. So I'm selfish, really. I just want to solve my problems. I can understand <laughs> that. Yeah. Hey, well, you're on this show. Get some perks out of it, right? Yeah, exactly. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's take a quick break and thank our other sponsor, Trim Tonic, uh, which is a natural uh, natural appetite suppressant tonic that takes the edge off of being hungry. What makes Trim Tonic unique is that it uses no stimulants to get this effect, no caffeine, no huja. Instead, it has eight active ingredients, some of which have clinical studies showing their ability to curb appetite and reduce body fat. Three main ingredients are Acran, Ves Espera, Irvinia Gabonensis seed extracts, both of which are tropical plants. Someday I'm going to find out whether I'm actually saying those right or not, <laughs> but I'll keep saying it that way. Used in India and Africa for uh, curbing appetites. And the third is cocoa leaf extract. Be sure to visit braintonicwithaq.com for more information. Enter coupon code TWIT for a 20% discount. Check it out. And for those of you out there, it does. It tastes like punch. It tastes <laughs> like punch. I don't have any right now, but it does. <laughs> <laughs> Neither do I. I actually probably could use some right now. Uh, all right, let's move into the arena. To enter, one lives. Android Arena. All right, so uh, let's check out, first of all, um, oh, the poll. <laughs> yeah, we got to check into the poll. We got to take a look at last week. Last week was a grab bag episode. Uh, we had our all seen. feedback episode last week. We like to do grab bags with that. So uh, taking a look, there was Mort Player <laughs> Audiobooks versus MyTubo versus Launcher Pro. I knew another, another, this was going to win. Another ringer. Yes. Kevin Purdy <laughs> uh, reviewed Launcher Pro, and that actually gave us a chance to sort of tease this week as we review other launchers. So watch that episode to learn more about Launcher Pro if you don't already know. Yeah, we, um, we allowed Kevin to win. Yes. Uh, we because we did. just wanted to use yeah. it as, you know, like yeah, a yeah. teaser. And he was a guest. I mean, why, yeah. would, why would you want your guest to lose? Right? That would be so <laughs> yeah, mean. Yeah, that would be so mean. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, so yeah, Launcher Pro. <laughs> Uh, by, by far and away with 67% of the vote, totally the winner. Uh, my Tubo second at 20%. Mort Player third at 13%. I still like Mort Player, but, you know, Hey, My Tubo's still pretty good if you guys don't have it, since we don't have Instagram, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this week we are going to uh, go along the route of uh, home replacement launchers, of which there are tons. Tons. Uh, there are so many to choose from. Uh, we kind of put the call out to see, you know, what some of people's favorites are, and, we, you know, we, we heard some really good suggestions and everything. But we'll start with you, Ron, I believe, with, uh, well, yeah, you just take it away. Sure, yeah. So I did the same thing. I, I tweeted out to all my followers. I said, hey, guys, what are, what are the Android uh, launcher apps you use? A lot of people said Launcher Pro, which I get. Yeah. Yeah, and um, and then actually a lot of people recommended the ones that uh, Eileen and Jason, you guys are gonna take a look at. Yeah. But I was looking for the ones like I, w I was looking for the one one launcher that like one person mentioned because I was curious. <laughs> I want to see like I want to get down to the nitty to the deep into the marketplace. And I actually found two that I looked at. One I'm not gonna talk about today, but I want to talk about on a future show at some point called Zine Launcher. But mm -hmm. um, was curious and had some good things. But ultimately I settled on for my entry into the arena, uh, Regina Launcher or Regina. I think it's Regina. We'll go <laughs> Regina. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, so Regina Launcher caught my eye because it ta it's Re Regina 3D Launcher. And after the experience of um, SPB, SPB Shell, Shell 3D yeah. a couple of weeks ago, I really wanted to find a, a, a wow factor launcher that could do it for me. And it looks like where SPB Shell f failed a little for me, Regina steps in and does a great job. Um, basically, it, it takes the idea of, uh, at first it gives you a very streamlined uh, home screen. Uh, and so the, the bottom um, the, the bottom phone, browser, apps button is much more streamlined than the other launchers that I saw. And then as Eileen was just she showed it off here, if you swipe between the different workspaces, you, see, um, you can see it just kind of slides through and gives you this very Linux-y kind of spaces kind of view where you can take a look at the different uh, workspaces, which I thought was very, very cool. And then also if you, if you tap on one screen there and just do a quick swipe, 
it just moves in a very nice kind of 3D manner. So just if you swipe oh. across, yeah. If you just swipe across? Just swipe across, yeah. See? Uh -huh. So yeah, so you don't need to go through the carousel. You can just swipe right across. Um, but if you, if, you tap, if you tap and hold, you do get the, um, the carousel. Also, if you tap and hold, you get a different kind of uh, widget installation menu. And now Regina also offers, they offer a weather widget. They offer a bunch of different types of widgets. So they've got their own section for Regina widgets. But they also have support for the Android widgets. And they also have support for your folders and shortcuts and things like that. But what's also neat, is that they they offer their own um, Regina wallpapers as well. So if you um, if you look if you click on that tab, the bottom tab on the left side of that, you open up the wallpaper section left to the left. This one. <laughs> yeah, this? down there. Sorry. No. Oh <laughs> shoot! Sorry. Those if you see you if you see visually. underneath the ad, there's a little uh, edit tab. Yes. Yeah. There we go. So there you go. So you can edit your, your workspace wallpaper and the workspace name. So you can have, uh, you can, it takes the idea of the screens and turns it into workspaces. So you can have one screen or workspace be communications or games or applications or, uh, you know, media or whatever you might want to do. But what I thought was also neat was in the settings and in the, um, in, the, in the setup for it, you can control all of the 3D effects. So if you want to turn off the reflections or turn off the, the endless rotation or any of those or the magnifications or the anti-aliasing, if it's not running optimal on your phone, if you have an older phone, you can scale back the, 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 um, the look and feel um, and still get the power of the launcher. But what also I thought was kind of neat is at the very top of the settings, it's got a secret menu. Which is cool because you can set up a, a menu, a workspace of with a secret menu, and then if you hand your phone to somebody, they won't be able to find. Which I thought was a neat idea. Uh, so oh, um, yes, interesting. so it really kind of impressed me, and I, mean, I looked to see how you know it hasn't been downloaded that much. I mean, it's 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 not one of the major popular ones. It's a nice little platform. I think it's got currently right now between 100,000 and 500,000 installs, which isn't insignificant. But it's a very elegant, very clean launcher, and um, has a bunch of uh, you know has a, a, Regina has a whole bunch of other things like they've got a to do list app and their weather server plugin and stuff like that. So there are ways to build off of it. And it just really impressed me. So. Oh, look at the circle, the carousel, yeah. Yeah, so. That's cool. Yeah, I did notice when you uh, wanted to add an app. Oh, and here, here's the app tray, too. Oh, the app I tray like is neat. Well, because the app tray You picks could change up. this, too. This is yeah, just exactly. my settings, but. It, and it picks up that similar view to um, that the tablet that Honeycomb kind of showed with that like the kind of pa a tilted angle go scrolling through. And then when um, you put an app, like, like, you can kind of put it wherever you want, like right there. Oh, so it doesn't seem to align it to like I a mean, big. I mean, it it's a grid, aligns. but it's yeah. Not, yeah, yeah, it's kind of yeah. a. Off it's grid. a it's a relaxed grid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a that's really cool. relaxed grid. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it is like so relaxed that so grid. So relaxed. Yeah, man. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> But yeah, so I dug it. So it's definitely one that uh, I felt was off the beaten path. So. Nice. All right, very cool. And thank you to whoever recommended it to me. I, I had it written down before, but I don't have it in front of me. But the person who tipped me off for this, you know who they are. So thank you. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> All right, Eileen. I guess it's my turn. So I'm going to show you Go Launcher X, which is on my phone here. Let me just go ahead and start launching that. All right. So uh, this is also free in the App Store. And also thank you on Twitter uh, to whoever. There was actually a few people when I tweeted out on our at Android Show Twitter account. Uh, there were a few people who said, go Launcher X. I said, OK. I had actually been using Zeme, but I wanted to try something new. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, like Ron said, we'll talk about Zeme in another time. But um, so this is Go Launcher X, and basically, it's totally customizable. There, uh, I'm going to show you the dock here. You can uh, put 15 icons on the dock, and you can customize the icons to, uh, you know, based on whatever theme you've downloaded, whatever wallpaper. You could even, you know, make your own I custom icon and put that in there, and to make to represent an app. Um, um, there's also, let, let me show you the app tray. Now, the app tray, oops, sorry. The app tray is pretty cool um, because I don't know if you could see, I probably have a really crappy theme for you to see, but there's all apps here. And the way I, uh, I've actually used the chord function in order to show all my apps here. But there's many different ways. You can slide, you can do some weird checkering, you know, whatever you want. That's all my apps. And then here in recent, you can see what I've been using recently, what I'd open. And apparently you can, let's say, I'm going to turn off Tweetcaster Premium Close. All within the little app drawer, which I think is um, pretty cool. Um, and then, it, again, it's all pretty customizable. And uh, let's see, should I show you? It goes horizontal as well if uh, I haven't really had any horizontal needs on the home screen, but I think that's pretty cool as well. Um, you can, let me show you, uh, much like other launchers, if you long tap a widget here, I'm going to resize it and make it bigger. Yay. There we go. I can 
uh, do that with any uh, uh, app uh, widget, which is pretty cool. Um, let's see, arranging screens. Do you guys want to see a new wallpaper? Probably not. I mean, you can you can customize to your heart's content. Um, on here. Preferences, uh, resizing widgets, you could see here the horizontal. There's gesture support too. So what I've done, uh, see that uh, dock there when I go up, I lose the, there's many different kinds of gesture supports mm -hmm. for, I haven't even played with is, <laughs> the, all the different kinds of gestures that you could have uh, while using this, uh, this uh, home replacement. But um, you know, you can go on and on for days. Um, let's see. I feel like I'm not giving it enough credit. I feel like there's so much more to do. But um, so let me just change the theme. You have to be careful with some of the themes. I downloaded this Paul Frank theme, and virtually all of the icons became monkeys, and I couldn't <laughs> see. But I mean, <laughs> you could actually download the theme and then change all the icons per your app. But that's kind of a pain. So. You know, that reminds that reminds me of the old themes, and when Windows XP rolled out themes or, uh -huh. or, or yeah. whatever version, you could install a theme, and it would change everything, like yeah. change every icon and font. Oh. And it's been like hours trying to revert it back. <laughs> totally scared me. Okay, so now I'm going back to the honeycomb theme. Mm. Uh, I kind of like that. That's kind of nice. And and this see here, me switching. It's kind of Regina esque. Ooh. I chose that because you were doing Regina. But there's yep. so many different ways. Like you could just kind of swipe it. Again, you have so many different um, options on customizing the way you turn each page. Um, so I don't know. I I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, uh, I'm just making sure I haven't uh, forgotten anything. But um, overall, as a free launcher, and there's so many downloadable themes and customizable icons and widgets, and let's see here, let me, uh, if I do uh, add, you know, they, ha like Regina, Go Widget has many of their own widgets, uh, shortcuts, widgets, wallpaper, you name it, uh, they have it. I was pretty impressed, quite honestly, and the speed, um, and uh, how effortless it was to kind of just play around. I mean, there's, there's, you know, settings, um, you know, up the wazoo. And oh, what one more thing I like, just, just small. But when you go to the app drawer, let's see if you could see it here. And I go to all, um, as I'm swiping oh, around. Cool. Uh, oh, it doesn't the show. The icons it. kind well, of flip around. The icons, as you're, well, that's one way. That's, that's there's, cool. there's many different ways you can have your icons change. But um, I, I wish I could show this to you. But um, say that app bonus right there. Um, when you download a new app, it'll have a little tag that says new. Oh, that's uh, nice. Yeah, it's kind of nice. Do so you remember like so you that's don't forget new, it. See, there's the, <laughs> the new here. I guess this is a new setting, the display settings, new advanced settings. I could go on for days about all the advanced settings, but I think I may have covered, you know, most of it. So, yeah, transition effects, scrolling the way however you want to do it. Nice. They, I mean, I I'm I love this launcher. I'm I think I'm set. I mean, yeah, I you're going to stick with this? I'm going to stick with this. I love it. I love the way it's given me, you know, all the options are great. If I have I think I already have a ton of options, but if I have any more, my head might burst. So wow, yeah, that's bold. I know. bold. I mean, it's funny because I looked at I've, I've looked at uh, you know a bunch of launchers, and I still always end up back on the default one. I don't know why. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh uh, well, so. here's my secret about default. I kind of went back to the default keyboard. Ooh, After our I, keyboard thing. I like this as a day of confession. I know. You know what? <laughs> I, I type faster with it. I really do. Yeah. <laughs> so fair enough. Yeah, understandable. Uh, I, I, for some reason, do that as well. I end up, you know, trying yeah. a new keyboard, using it for three weeks, and going, oh, this is the greatest thing. And then for some reason, I go back because I'm like, oh, well, it wasn't that bad. And Once again, this that's, does this that's, weird that's, thing. And that's what's so great about Android is that you can use whatever you want, whatever works for you. Exactly. Find the solution and use it. You the can power use. of choice. That's exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this week, I'm going to talk about a launcher, which I spent, I literally spent the entire last week working with this launcher. And it comes highly recommended from the folks uh, on Twitter and, and in the chat room uh, as an alternative launcher pro, which is one of the more popular launchers, as evidenced by this week's poll. Uh, and that is ADW uh, launcher. And it's free. There's actually an EX version that you can get in the Android market, uh, which is $3.28. That gets you kind of a completely, they say a completely different code base, uh, so it kind of runs better. Uh, it also comes with a lot more bells and whistles, which is hard to believe because in my time playing with ADW, there are a lot of bells and whistles. You'll notice that I can't really show you anything with them right now because this is the second time that I'm saying all this. The first time, it actually crashed in the middle of trying to add a home screen. Now, I can't say that I blame ADW on that entirely because my phone is kind of uh, craptastic at this point. So it's very possible that the crashing happened as a result of my phone. 
but it could be ADW, but I'm pretty sure it's probably not because a lot of people love it and a lot of people use it. So keep that in mind. Don't judge me based on my forced clothes. Uh, so uh, some of the things that I really liked about it, it's very easy to theme. There are a ton of themes that you can find in the market. Most of them are free, although some of them are paid and you can completely change the look of the home screen and uh, how, how it looks basically throughout all the way up to the notification bar up at the top. Uh, you can pinch to switch the screen. So if you do this kind of pinch motion, it'll give you all the screens on the display and allow you to kind of choose from those. You can add and remove extra home screens. Uh, you can config. There, there are just a ton of configuration options. Um, there's a paginator, so a paginator, however you want to say that. So essentially, like when you swipe from left to right, you can change the way it shows you which screen it's on. Do you want dots at the top and it tells you you're on this dot? Do you want a bar at the bottom that slides? Do you want that bar to disappear when you're done scrolling? All that kind of stuff. It's very configurable in that re in that realm. Uh, resizable widgets, as I think all of our uh, launches have had today. Uh, programmable home key. So if you don't want your home key to display apps, you want it to do nothing. You want it to launch an app. You can you can program that. Drawer. You can set the drawer action to go up to down, or you can set it to go side to side. Either way, uh, I prefer up and down, but you can do the side to side if you like. Um, and I, I found the customization of things in ADW versus Launcher Pro to be a little bit more fine-tuned. In Launcher Pro, it was like you have options from like small, small, medium, medium, large, you know, all these predefined levels um, for all, all sorts of customizations. In ADW, it's a numeric value that ranges from like one to 100. So you could literally get super precise if you want to. Almost seems like too much too much room within there, but um, but some people would really love that kind of control. Um, and all of this can be backed up and restored within the app. There's an in-app uh, backup and restore option that allows you to kind of save your configurations. You can set columns, the number of items on a column and on a row, which I did. Uh, it's just, it, it allows you full customization. Um, in my time playing with it, I, I kind of went into it thinking, you know, is this going to replace Launcher Pro that I've used for months and months now? It would have to be really good. And I think initially I thought that it was a little slower than Launcher Pro, but I spent a week with it. And in the end, I mean, they're really just so incredibly similar in the features that they offer and the speed at which they run on my old phone, let alone the newer phones. Um, you know, it's they're, they're very comparable in a lot of ways. So I think you couldn't go wrong with either of them. So that's ADW Launcher. And like I said, it's free. It's in the Android market. You can check it out. And hopefully it won't crash your phone like my phone crashed a little while ago. And if there ever was an advertisement to watch the live feed, it was this episode. <laughs> maybe maybe what I'll do is throw that moment at the very end of today's yeah, episode. Because you got a whole extra. mini show in there. I we know, talked about we showed, a lot of stuff. Yeah, we showed uh, Apple Bombs stuff. I mean, yeah. I don't know. Oof. Man, that was that was a rough one. Yeah. I gotta say. Okay. Well, <laughs> let's uh, let's pretend that crash never happened and uh, allow you to vote for your favorite launcher from episode thirteen. This episode right here, uh, Regina 3D Launcher, Go Launcher EX, and ADW Launcher. All of those. If you want to uh, vote, you can go to <laughs> poll.cm slash one nine one two. Poll.cm slash one nine one two and uh you know share share and let us know which one is your favorite of the three we talked to it should also be noted that casey chang wrote in to aaa at twit.tv and said but can anybody beat my android home launcher roundup now 48 different homes reviewed it's amazing which, amazing which is really impressive i know i, mean, I had yeah. to look at mine i had to go okay did i miss anything i mean this thing is is yeah. huge it's got I, I it probably doesn't have everything because there are tons of home uh, launchers, but, but it probably has the most important ones. Is but my guess, do you right? want a list of everything? I know, <laughs> even <laughs> this feels like a lot. But uh, I feel like somebody on one of the Android blogs, something like that, needs to pick this up and reprint. I mean, like, because this is the kind of this is the kind of guide that I think people need, and yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, but this is the amazing amount of work, Casey. I'm impressed. So good job. Absolutely. Thanks for sending that in. Um, so that is it. I think we've kind of rounded out the show. <laughs> this is a this was a chunky one. Jason, thank you so much for coming in to the studio or, or rather sticking around in the studio nope. and uh, sharing your developer insight. No problem. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Go ahead and plug whatever you'd like to plug. Twitter. Uh, I've got a bunch of really cool apps and possible some really cool hardware integrations coming out uh, in the next few weeks. I'm not ready to announce just yet, but uh, follow me on Twitter and you'll find out all the awesome uh, details. It's at Applebaum. 
Spelled kind of funny. E L, not L E. A P P E L B A U M. Yes. Just in case. Just Don't in want case. anyone to mess <laughs> to mix that up. And they can find you on hack5.org as well. Uh, and then Ron, what about you, sir? Yes, you can find me on Twitter, Twitter at RonXO, and there's a link there to my About Me page, which has links to all my sites, like iFanboy and Graphically and stuff like that, so you can find me. Uh, so look at my bio on Twitter, at RonXO. Right on, and Eileen. Uh, just follow me over on Twitter, at uh, Eileen TV. And I am at Raygun01 on Twitter, and thank you guys yet again for joining us for another episode of All About Android. That's it for this week. Voicemail, uh, you can leave us 347-SHOW-AAA. You can email and send us a link to a video mail if you like, aaa at twit.tv. Uh, hit us up on Twitter. We're at Android Show. Show notes are found at twit.tv slash aaa. And finally, you can catch us live every Monday from 5 to 6 p.m. Pacific at live.twit.tv. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. We'll see you next week for another episode of All About Android.